everybody, it's Glenn, back in this video with the first installment of my Masters of the Universe Classics 2012 subscription. And for anybody who, when I named Swiftwind as my number one figure last year, were all like, oh, it's a flying unicorn, it's a bit gay, isn't it? Well, I now present to you a whole new level of girliness to the Masters of the Universe Classics action figure line. It's the Star Sisters. Here they are left to right. Jewel Star, Hidden Beauty, Starla, Bright and Beautiful Leader, and Tall Star, Lovely Lookout. And of course, not to forget, Glory Bird flying above there. And looking at them in the packaging, they do so, did a decent job of um, displaying these figures for anybody who wants to keep them in, in packet. You can get a good gawk at every figure that's included without the need of opening them. Plus you get this kind of dusk backdrop. And before I go any further, I just want to point out the white mailer box that all Masters of the Universe Classics figures come in. And here it is. Star Sisters, Jewel Star, Starla, Tall Star, as expected. But then down here, you see that? It says Cringer. I don't know why it says that. Anybody know why? Who knows? Let's take a closer look at the packaging back. I haven't read the origin story for the Star Sisters on here, so this will be our first time doing so. In ancient times, an evil sorceress became jealous of the Star Sisters, youth and beauty, and trapped them in a shooting star. It was sent hurling through the cosmos until the three women crash-landed on Etheria. There they remained magically confined in the side of a mountain until the day swift wind's hooves accidentally loosened the stone that concealed their prison. Shira quickly used her powers to melt away the star that held them cat captive. In gratitude, the sisters pledged their everlasting friendship. Jewel Star magically conjures gem armor to protect herself and others. Tallstar uses her magic to stretch to unbelievable heights. Starla, with her pet glory bird, can sense danger and project spells of light against her foes. Together they stand side by side with Shira in the battle for freedom. And there's the some other Princess of Power Evil Horde figures that have been issued in the Masters of the Universe Classics line. So let's just flip the girls around. Get a closer look at them in the package. So the story behind the Star Sisters, they were produced... Um, only ever in prototypes, which were pictured in a Mattel product catalogue back in the day and were never actually produced, released to shops. To coincide with the original release of the figures, which never in fact happened, they did make an appearance in the she cartoon, I think only for one episode, and only ever really briefly in that episode. I don't think they really played any great role in that episode, and it was more just an attempt to flog the figures that never actually became available for sale anyway. So that's a bit of a backstory on the girls here. I am going to open these bad bitches up, and we'll talk further my impressions of them. Phew! Back with the girls out of package now, and I have to say, I haven't been all that excited about the Star Sisters. That is, until now. Having got them out of the package, I'm a lot happier with them. Having watched reviews here on YouTube, I have to say, from watching the, view, the reviews, the figures have looked horribly cheap, but in person, they um, the quality 
is a lot better than I thought it would be. I don't know if the cheapness maybe just comes across in the kind of gaudy colours that they're rendered in, but certainly from watching reviews and seeing pictures, they did have a um, gaudy cheapness about them, which having held them in my hands and played around with them a bit, certainly in person, they don't come across that way. That said, I'm still, you know, in terms of Princess of Power characters, these would have been pretty far down the list. I'd have loved to have seen recurring characters like Scorpia, Angela, Frosta, or even Glimmer before these girls here. But saying that, you kind of in a line like Masters of the Universe classics, they kind of can't bring out all the heavy hitters in the beginning or um, interest would soon wane, so they kind of have to mix in the obscure with the popular to um, kind of keep people interested. But the good thing with them producing characters like the Star Sisters is it kind of means that no character really is off the table if characters like this that produced, that appeared for about 20 seconds in one episode and were only ever produced in prototypes back in the vintage line, if they can make it into the Masters of the Universe Classics line, then pretty much any character can. So let's just move the camera in for a closer look at these figures. I guess first up we'll take a look at Glory Bird here. Is the camera focusing on Glory Bird? There we go. Looks good on his perch. Has a fine pink plume of feathers along his back and the wings are articulated, which is cool. Here's Starla, leader of the Star Sisters. And I got a feeling she's the hot sister. I think she's the kind of buxom babe, girl next door sister. Let's just spin her around. They all have the same staff, but in different colors. It's kind of a um, translucent plastic with glitter inside. And that's one of the things, actually in person, it looks a lot better than it kind of translates probably to you in this video. And she's got a fine ponytail on her. It's something I'm really enjoying about the female figures um, that have been produced in this line. They always put a fierce hairdo on the girls. Has a lot of kind of um, movement and dynamism in the hair, kind of flowing in the wind almost. Of course Starla. These are all based on the um, kind of generic Master of the Universe classics female figure, so features all the um, articulation that you've become accustomed to in that figure. His jewel star. And uh, as you remember on the package, jewel star, hidden beauty. Um, they weren't lying. She is the ugly sister of the trio. Bless her. Um, I think her face is just a little bit harsh in comparison to the other two. And her profile on the nose isn't very flattering. Yet what she lacks in the face, she makes up for in the hair. She's beating her other two sisters with the hairdo stakes. It's um, defying gravity there and looking great for it. Her cape is um, nice. It's kind of pearlescent and kind of semi-transparent. This is the one that I was most worried about, as one of the reviews I watched, it got the most criticism. Um, some quality control issues with the paint finish, but um, 
this version of the figure I have is fine and it's got quite a nice paint finish to it um, yes it's very pink and there is kind of glitter mixed into the paint so she does kind of shimmer in the light as I move her around which is cool um, I wish they'd gone they have done kind of an angular sculpt on her um, I only wish they'd have made that a bit more stylized and last of the bunch is Tallstar I think she's probably my favorite I say the look of her compared to the other two she kind of looks like the um, mature sensible sister Let's just spin her around like her sister. She's got a decent head of hair on her. And my memory, I think she's my favourite because my memory from the cartoon, all I remember about the Star Sisters is Tall Star here. She's able to extend her body and she does that to great effect in the cartoon I just remember her kind of stretching up into the sky kind of seemingly hundreds and hundreds of meters which was pretty cool but um Matty have made an effort to um, simulate her body stretching ability which I will go into now. So Torstar comes with these interchangeable parts. So we can somewhat replicate her power to stretch her body. Let me just remove her staff. So her legs snap off as do her arms there her head comes off let's just remove her other arm so these parts snap on Some of the parts she has a bit of a struggle with. So there's a tall, tall star. She's, let me just move the camera back a little bit. There she is just taller than her staff. If we bring her sisters back in, you'll get a better idea of how much she has extended. Um, not very much. She has just kind of extended enough that she could kind of just peek over her sister's head which is um, a power which might come in handy say if you're at a concert um, but not really a power that's going to come in handy fighting the horde I'm a bit disappointed with that I mean I don't know why they made the parts so tiny I've kind of only really given her about half an inch in height which is really quite disappointing I remember they've used the same toy biz used this same um, concept in one of their mr. fantastic movie figures except the interchangeable parts which are about a centimeter here were much longer and when you put all the parts on the figure 
he became transformed from a six inch figure to a 12 inch figure, which, you know, is significant. Here, it's um, just not significant, the change in height. You kind of wonder, what's the point to it? It's like my mum always says, if you're not going to do it properly, don't do it at all. Um, and weirdly, her um, head there, with the ringlets of the costume, she kind of looks like an African tribeswoman who's extended her neck. So that's a not tall enough tall star, in my opinion. So much for the card packaging back saying, Tall Star uses her magic to stretch to unbelievable heights. Open brackets, half an inch, close brackets. <laughs> anyway, that's my review of the Star Sisters. Pleased to add them to my collection and more excited now I've got them in my hands than I was previous. I know these figures aren't going to be to everybody's taste to say the least it's um probably more pink and glitter than i ever thought my action figure collection would contain but still it's nice to add a bunch of girl action figures to the masters of the universe classics line it's always good to see sisters doing it for themselves anyway please comment rate and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next video bye